Now in lesson 3.4, you can use any of the rules that you've learned so far about logarithms. So uh, any of the rules about splitting things up, condensing things, moving powers, um, going from exponential to logarithmic and back and forth. All of those rules can be used. And then we can also use the rules of algebra. So all of that combined is going to allow us to solve these equations. So let's go ahead and start with problem number one. To solve an equation like this, one of the most important pieces is for you to look at what the bases are and then our job is going to be to see one if we can get them to match let's do that that's the easiest way to solve these two if we can't get them to match we're going to have to use logarithms now these ones we can get to match four and eight are both multiples of two that's what they have in common. They can be written as a power of 2. Now, once you've discovered what power they can be written as, that's what we're going to do. So, 4 is the same as 2 squared. Now, whatever is already up in the power, put in parentheses, because we're going to need to take that 2 and distribute that. Now, let's look at the 8. 8 is the same as 2 cubed. So the power that was already up there, again, put in parentheses. Now the really great part about this is because as soon as we find the match, replace it so that the match is showing, we can take that base off. So once we get the bases to match, it just becomes 2 times x plus 7 has to equal 3 times x plus 3. Because we got the 2's to match, now we got to get the powers to match. So the powers are, are equal, then we'll get these two sides to be equal. So um, from here it's just a standard equation. So we're going to distribute. Since there are no like terms, we got to start moving things around. So I would probably subtract 9 from both sides and subtract 2x from both sides. And we get 5 is equal to x. Bam! That's it. So that is number 1. So let's now go back, and I wanted to do one that was fractional, so let's look at number uh, 5. Now, number five is going to be the same techniques we used for number one. You have to think, how can I get those bases to match, and is it possible to get those bases to match? Well, what's really cool is that nine is three squared, 16 is four squared. So I can rewrite nine sixteenths as three fourths squared. And then it's just going to multiply, just like in number one, by the power that was already there. As you can see, like in problem number one, where we got the basis to match, in this one now we got the basis to match, so we can just take them off, and then it becomes the simpler equation, 2 times 3x minus 2, equals 5x plus 4. Now, what do we do from here? Well, it's just a standard equation, so distribute. 
and let's start moving around now to solve. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. I'm going to add 4. And I get x is equal to 8. Any questions about number 1 or number 5? Okay, guys, now let's look at uh, some problems where we have to use a slightly different technique. Let's do 11 and 15. Well, let, well let's start with 11. Now, there's no basis. It's a logarithmic equation. To solve a logarithmic equation, if there are logs on both sides, we have one thing we can do. But if we have a problem like this, where we don't have a logarithm on both sides, we are going to switch this to exponential in order to solve it. So remember the rule that the log base b of the number equals the power can be rearranged so that the number is the base to that power. It is super essential in the last lesson, and in this lesson, you know how to switch that back and forth. Gotta know that. So, since we need to know that, um, let's think about what this is. This here, natural log, is really a log base e. So it's not a bad idea so that it looks more like this to rewrite it as a log base e. Now remember, a log is a log base 10. A natural log is a log base e. Now they just use this shorthand to allow us to uh, just write it a little quicker. But this means log base 10, this means log base e. So if you rearrange that, now we can compare it to that and we can switch it to its exponential version. And so we get that the a is equal to e to the fourth. And that's it, we have solved for a, we have solved for the variable. So if we know this, that really can simplify our lives and make things easier. Any questions about that? Okay, now let's go back up here. Now let's do number 15. Now, to do number 15, we can kind of see that our variable is inside of a logarithm, kind of like this one was. But it's not quite as simple as 11 because you want, if there's a logarithm on your variable and only on your variable, you want that to be on one side by itself. So let's move that 14 by subtraction to the other side as a way to start getting it ready. So we get 20 natural log of 7x equals 40. Now, look at 11 compared to 15. For 15, we have a number in front. We want to divide that off. So our next phase is divide both sides by 20. As you can see, now it looks very, very much like we saw in problem 11. So now we can take that and switch it to an exponential. So 7x equals e squared. Now we're almost done. Think about mathematically, if you were to solve this equation, the next thing you would do is divide by 7. Do it. That's exactly what we do next. So x equals e squared divided by 7. So there is 15. Any questions about that one? 
Okay. Now I would like to do 22 and 26. I'm just going to kind of cut all this this time. So in 22, we have the log of the left side equals the log of the right. Now what's really cool about that is in our earlier equations, our goal was to get the bases to match so that I could take those off. In this equation, if we get the log of everything equals the log of everything, since those match, that's another time where we can just take that off. So this setup of this equation makes it look kind of difficult, but it's just actually a, a much simpler equation. It's technically we can solve x squared plus 15 has to equal 41. Now it's just an equation to solve. We get x squared equals uh, 30, or no, 26. Did I write that right? What is it? Let me see. <laughs> x squared plus 5. I'm so sorry. I'm like, I don't think they would have meant that. That's a 5. Uh, so if I subtract 5 from both sides, I get 36. So x is plus or minus the square root of 36, or plus or minus 6. Now you have to be careful with exponentials versus logarithms. If it started out as an exponential, any number can be used as a solution to an exponential. For a logarithm, you do have to be careful. When we plug it back in to the logarithm, we got to get a positive inside there. You can't have negatives. And so if I put a positive 6 there, that squares it becomes a positive 41. If I put a negative 6 right there, when I square it, it becomes a positive, and so it's okay. Both of those answers work. So for logarithmic equations, we do have to check our answer in the original and make sure we don't have any negatives in there. Okay, now let's look at 26. If we compare 22 to 26, the problem is, is that this side has two logarithms, not just one. The only way we're allowed to use the rule in 22 where we chop that off is if it's the log of everything equals the log of everything. That's the only time you can do that. This is not in one logarithm. It's in two. Can anyone tell me what rule can we use to bring these two logarithms together if there's a minus between them? So how can we condense this if there's a minus between them? What can we do? What rule can we use if there's a minus between them? Minus can become division. So these two can come together using our rules of condensing from uh, lesson 3-3 if we bring them together as a division. So this is really the log base 5 of x equals the log base 5 of x plus 6 divided by 4. Now, once we get log of everything equals log of everything, we can take the logs off. And so now it just becomes the equation x equals x plus 6 over 4. Now, a nice way to solve that is to cross multiply the 4. And then it just looks like a normal equation. Subtract x from both sides, divide by 3. Now, we should always just take a moment, make sure when we plug a 2 in, to both parts of the original, we get positives. Well, that's a positive 2, that's a positive 8. We're good to go. The answer is correct. Any questions about 22 or 26? Okie dokie. The next ones I want to do, I want to do problem 32. So let's look at the instructions before I move from this page. 
the instructions say to solve each equation and round. So for these equations, when they mention anything about rounding, we're going to have an exact answer first, and then we're going to put it into the, uh, uh, the calculator. And let's round to the nearest tenth. Okay, so let's do 32. So for 32, it says 8x minus 1 equals 3.4. Let's get this alone so we can use our some, some of our rules of logarithms. So we get 8 to a power of x. If we add 1 to both sides, we get that that equals 4.4. Now, there's no way to make the number 4.4 a power of 8. So now we can just use some rules of logarithms to solve this. Just stick a natural log on both sides. When you get to the point where you get stuck and there's no way to solve it, there's no way to get the bases to match, then use a logarithm. And so what happens is, is this power can drop down in front. The natural log of 8 is a number. So we can just divide both sides by the natural log of 8. Now the instructions say to round your answer to the nearest tenth. This is your answer. I need to see that. That's the exact answer. And now let's go for, well, what's the full answer? Well, um, the natural log of 4.4 divided by the natural log of 8 is 0 0.7. Okay, so that is how you would do 32. Now let's go back up. I want to take a look at an equation where we can't get the basis to match. I would like to do problem number 39. So unfortunately for us, there is no way to get 7 and 3 to be a matching base. I can't put a power on a, on a 3 to turn it into a 7 or vice versa. When that's the case, we stick a natural log on both sides. So the first thing we're going to do is stick a natural log on the front of the base of both sides. Now the reason we do that is so that we can use our rules of logarithms and drop these powers down in front. When you drop them down in front, since they have more than one term, please put them in parentheses. So we're going to have 2x plus 1 times the natural log of 7 equals x plus 3 times the natural log of 3. Now don't get yourself all panicked here. The natural log of 7 and the natural log of 3 are just numbers. Think about what we would do if we had a number in front of that parenthesis. The next step we would do is to distribute. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to distribute that to both those things. So we get 2 times the natural log of 7 times x plus the natural log of 7 equals the natural log of 3 times x plus 3 times the natural log of 3. Well, how do you solve an equation? Well, we get the x terms to one side, the non-x terms to the other. So let's get the x terms to the left, the non-x terms to the right. So I'm going to subtract this one over and then subtract that one over there. And so I'm going to get 2 natural log of 7x minus the natural log of 3x equals 3 natural log of 3 minus the natural log of 7. Now, this is just a number. It's a disgusting number. I couldn't tell you what that number is. I could tell you approximately what it is, but it's just a number. These are just numbers. We can't physically subtract those, so when that's the case, use a trick of factoring out the x. And then it's just going to be a number times x. Well, let's think about it. If I have a number times x and I want to solve for x, I've got to divide that number off. So this is a number. Just divide it off. 
And so our final answer looks disgusting, but it's just going to be 3 natural log of 3 minus natural log of 7 divided by 2 natural log of 7 minus natural log of 3. This is a number. That was this side. And then this is a number. Feel free to just stop there. That's your exact answer. I would say this is the hardest equation in the homework, or one of the hardest types. And you have one more of these to try to practice. Just because those natural log of 7s and natural log of 3s just get kind of stuck there, and so um, it, it becomes hard to kind of make sure you're navigating the algebra. Okay, so let's just go over the steps one more time. When you can't get the bases to match, stick a natural log on both sides so that you can drop the parentheses down in front or the powers down in front. Make sure to use parentheses. Then we're going to distribute. That's what we did here. Then we're going to get the x terms on one side, the non-x terms on the other. Because we can't add these, factor out an x, put everything else in parentheses, then divide that off. So that's why it came to the bottom here. Now, if they would say in the instructions, which they didn't and I don't care about, uh, you know, round your entrance to the nearest hundredth, you would put this into a calculator. My suggestion would be use parentheses or you will, you will make a mistake somewhere, okay? So that's one of the hardest ones. Uh, I want to do, I know we're getting a little late there, but let's do uh, 50, 60, and 69. I just kind of wanted to do kind of one of each. So now let's look at 50. Here, let's do it over. To solve this equation, let's take a look at what's happening. There are three terms. It goes e to the 2x, half of that e to the x, and then no x's at all. That tells me that I can do something called u substitution. u substitution says take and let's make u whatever we appear in that middle spot, that lowest e to the x spot. Because what we get is something that feels more like a quadratic. Now, in the video, you'll see me do more of these. But basically, you're going to substitute out the e to the x for a u. So this is double that. That's why it became u squared. And then you're just going to factor. Just like you always would to solve. Set each one equal to zero and solve it. And then stick the E back in. If you get your E to the X equals a positive number, keep going. If you get your E to the X is a negative number, don't keep going. So this would just be X is the natural log of 10. The reason you don't keep going here is I can't take the natural log of a negative number, so this one doesn't work, but this one does. So that's a funky kind of one. Uh, there's only one more like that in this homework. And then let's do 60. In problem 60, you might notice we have a natural log separated. We want it to be the natural log equals the natural log. And we can follow the rule that if we have a plus between them, we are allowed to condense it by multiplying what's inside. Because as soon as we do that, we can take the natural log off of both sides. So we get x squared plus 2x, I just distributed, equals 63. Now to solve that, you want to get it equal to zero. You want to factor it. Nine times seven is 63. Uh, nine minus seven is the two in the middle. Now you're going to set each factor equal to zero. And then you're going to solve. Now unfortunately, this is a natural log. 
natural logs have issues if you stick a negative on the inside. So let's think about where the negative 9 would go. It would go there and there, and it would give you a negative in both spots. So that one you're going to throw out. But if we stick a 7 into both spots, there are positives there in both spots. So the 7 works just fine. Any questions about 60? Okay, we're going to do one more. I'll give you a chance to write that down, then we're going to do one more problem together. Now remember, these videos, or this will be posted on my YouTube channel if you need to watch it. Okay, let's look at problem 69. The last kind you're going to see in this section. So, if you want to solve an equation like this, first thing I always look to say is, okay, does everything have a log on it? Because then I can use my rules and kind of condense it together and take off the log. Well, this one doesn't. So when one of the pieces doesn't have a logarithm, but everything else does, let's get the pieces that do, uh, do not have logarithms on one side and the pieces that do have logarithms on the other. So let's just subtract this from both sides. Now the reason we can do that, or the reason that's helpful, is because we know that we can condense that. So a minus can condense together and become a division problem. Now we have an x in the bottom here, so remember, that cannot be zero. If answer, an answer of zero comes up, just keep that in mind. Well, what do we do when one side has a logarithm but the other side doesn't? Well, that's when you use your rules of exponentials. Remember, or exponentials and logarithms. So, so what do we know? That the log base v of the number equals the power. So the number is the base to that power. Let's take off all of those things and switch it. There's our base, there's our number, no it isn't, there's our base, there's our number, there is our power. So we know the number 2x minus 6 over x should equal our base of 2 to a power of 3. Remember the logarithm's answer is a power. Well 2 to the third is just the number 8, so we get 2x minus 6 over x equals 8. Let's put that 8 over 1. So you can see that it's solved very easily by just cross multiplying. You get 2x minus 6 equals 8x. I'll go over here. To solve 2x minus 6 equals 8x, let's get the x's to one side. Let's subtract 2x from both sides. We get negative 6 equals 8x. No, it doesn't. 8 minus 2 is 6, <laughs> last I checked. And then divide by 6, x equals negative 1. Now, remember, we've got to check our work. So we would put the negative 1 here, and that gives us a negative. Put the negative 1 here, that gives us a negative. So unfortunately, even after all of that work, this one does not work. So you always got to check them, because you can get what's called an erroneous solution which really, when you plug it back in, doesn't work. So that is your uh, start of your 3-4 homework, which is due by midnight tomorrow. You're going to watch that Ed Puzzle, so get yourself some more examples. Take those notes on the, the, the guided note sheet. So, so the notes you know, are these things. See, it looks like all the examples we just saw. Um, and as you go, if you have any questions on the 3-4 homework, please just reach out and let me know. Um, so that's it.